There's those bagpipes. Make you want to either make love or or fight somebody. <laughs> uh, welcome to uh, Piper's podcast again. Piper Pick Podcast, whatever we're calling the darn thing. A lot of fun. That's what we're calling it. Uh, holy cow! I've been out. I've been out on the road. I've done a lot of stuff. Uh, even since uh, the WrestleMania, uh, just whew, whizzed home, hugged my kids, you know, jumped out again, trying to see what's going on in the news, what all my buddies are doing. I see, I, you know, I live in Portland, and they they have a a reservoir in Portland that's fifty three thousand gallons. Now you look this up, and. Somebody caught some kid peeing in it, so they're going to drain the 53,000 gallons out of the reservoir because some kid peed in it. <laughs> really? I mean, <laughs> give me a break. This is, I'm sure, now, so you know, like, I want to introduce my guest in a second, but, uh, and he's a good one, man. Uh, but it's like, I don't know. Come on. Who hasn't peed in the pool? <laughs> I mean, 53,000 gallons. Baby, Jesus. I mean, fish shit in it, don't they? <laughs> that was the old thing. What was the old thing? I think W.C. Fields or something. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, would you want some water? Goes, no, thank you. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm just trying to keep you up on current events here around the world. Uh, then there was this guy, like, now I'm, I'm, I never claimed to be the brightest pencil in the bar, brightest spark, but uh, some guy decides he wants to end his life, okay? Now, that's a, that's a serious piece of work. I'm not going to make fun of that. Um, it's the battle plan that he had, ambience. <laughs> he... Uh, <laughs> So what he does is this, this fella, the first thing he does is he cuts off his penis. <laughs> okay, I, now listen, I'm just the messenger. He cuts off his penis. <laughs> and, uh, you introduce me or what? Hey, I'm a set here. Can you introduce me, please? Excuse me. Hey, you ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, folks. We have a guest on today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I got you. I'm so sorry. Okay, backing up, Rod. I think gentlemen, the guest that we have today is like one of my favorites of all time, and my brother. Uh, he's he exemplifies wrestling, pro wrestling, and uh, I appreciate and, uh, you saying that. <laughs> no, he's a man's man, and you know, I used to drag him around when he's about 17 years old. In Charlotte, North Carolina, but my he, goodness, yeah. <laughs> but he turned out to be one of the in greatest. the yellow canary in the yellow <laughs> canary <laughs> turned out to be one of the greatest masked wrestlers of all time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have with us this week. We're honored to have the grappler from Waxahachie, Texas. Hey, Roddy Piper, you know something, brother. It's an honor to be on the podcast, on your podcast with you. I love you like a brother yeah. from another mother. Okay, uh, and you know that's true. Good. But yeah. getting back to the guy, the, the 53,000 <laughs> gallons or whatever yeah. it was of water. Well, it was a reservoir. Okay, I live in Portland, Oregon. I've seen that on the news. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's going to cost the taxpayers $175,000 when they drain that, they said. Yeah. They that's did. some money out of my pocket, too. <laughs> and I know the guy. I can I seen him on the news. I've seen him before. They should drain it, that ugly son of a bitch. <laughs> I've seen him and I've drank with him in the bar before. I can't believe he did that. He, <laughs> he, he peed in the reservoir. I've seen it. 53,000 gallons are getting rid of. And they, in, in California, they need water, right? And we're draining 53,000 gallons out here and not giving it to nobody. Because somebody pissed in it. Are you kidding? Birds fly by and shit in it and piss in it all day. And we still drink it? Yeah, we drink it. <laughs> you know, it's like, just, just, like, okay. Then there's a the guy that decides he wants to end his life. I wish I didn't hear that one now. That's, 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 that's new on me. It's a hip-hop guy, and I, I'm just talking about it, but he's a hip-hop guy, and he cut off his penis 
And then, oh yeah, I mean, you gotta really think about this. To do that particular piece of business there, you, you got to be committed. Big time. <laughs> Big time. I mean, you got to be serious. I ain't life, seen the pill they made yet to convince me to do that No, one. sure. <laughs> no, there ain't no nothing in the world. Anyway, but then he wants to jump off and kill himself, right? Ooh. So he jumps off the second story. I don't know, broke his ankles. Oh, oh my God. Whenever they <laughs> take him to the hospital, <laughs> he's got his penis, or somebody does anyway. And then they find out he lives. And they can't sew it back on. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. You you folks out there think you've had a tough day. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We used to call them eunuchs back in a long Unix. time ago. I, hear, I don't know. I haven't read that much it's, of the Bible, no, but I've heard. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> Unix. Very good. Holy cow. But you know, like, I, I'm trying. I, I mean. He cut off his dick. Oh, man. God. Good <laughs> guy does. He has some serious Whoa. problems. Serious though. issues. Yeah. Serious yeah. issues. Um, but, you know, like, we try to wish the best for everybody here on Piper's Pod. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, so much, Roddy, I was going to say, um, the, you were talking about you, you dragged me around since 17, and it, I appreciate it as an honor being with a fellow like you. Taught me so much about the sport of professional wrestling, yeah. how to do interviews, how to wrestle, how to have a match, how to make a living, how to talk to promoters, <laughs> how to convince promoters to do your idea and make them think that it's their idea. <laughs> that way you can still do it <laughs> and it comes across well. <laughs> That's the one most important thing you taught me. That's where he makes you some money. I love you. And uh, I appreciate that so much. And But then I got your book that you wrote, the yeah. first one, the first, first book. One. Yeah. And, you know... You drug me all around the world, yeah. okay? And then we opened the transmission shop, and I worked 14 years we were there. Cool. We sold that, and yeah. we did everything together, and then I looked in the book, and I'm not mentioned one, one, one time. I go, Roddy, uh, hey, yeah, hello, yeah. Roddy, uh, Lenny, uh, the grappler, uh, remember me? Uh, and you, oh. So I asked you about it, and you had the perfect answer. What did I say? Everything that we done, yeah. I couldn't put in the book. We get arrested. <laughs> Are you crazy, boy? I said, all right, I, I didn't think of that. Oh, <laughs> so thanks man. for that favor, too. <laughs> I got a guy tried to kill me in mm. a car mm. while I was writing that book. And um, I was intensive care in Cedar sinai Hospital. Oof. For five days, I died on the table. Oh, my God. And they brought me back. Uh, this guy ran a car. It, I was in the passenger side. Mm. And he ran me into a wall and then two Suburbans that were coming on coming traffic ran over my ass and you know what is i we got out it was a jetta and my foot it literally went through the floor Holy to the cement trying to hang it on so obviously it was old jetta but when uh so police and kind of are over there and i get out and i'm just leaning against a, a, a telephone pole this is uh for you folks if you're familiar with Los Angeles, where you come up north on Highland and it splits from Highland to the 101, and you take a left and keep on Highland. So uh, this guy runs me into the wall, two Suburbans. I'm, I'm out finally, and there's other people hurt, and I'm leaning against the post, but there's no outside injuries on me. And I say to the mm. cops, you know, can you take me home? Like, uh, we're not a taxi company. Yeah, yeah okay. Thanks for you know, help. We don't like you anyway, right? <laughs> you know, and... Uh, so finally, I guess they did call a cab. Somehow the cab got me and brought me. I was only about two miles away. And the cab driver goes in and there was some, one of the guys was just finishing up and about to leave. He says, uh, you, uh, amigo, you want to come and get your, you want to come and get your amigo. And so he comes and gets me. And uh, I don't really remember this. This is more of what I've been told. And I guess I got in there in the apartment at the Barham Apartments. Oakwood Apartments, rather, on Barham Avenue. And uh, I said something like, listen, leave me alone. I'm going to take a shower. They fix everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I guess I went down, ba boom -ba. And this guy called the uh, 911. And he told me, he said, they came in. They're like lollygagging. And they came in, and I'm down in the bathtub. And they take my blood pressure. And I think it was like... 60 over 20. Whoa, that's like close that. to being gone. And the guy told me they took on a whole new attitude. Oh, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. And they got me into Cedar Sinai. 
It busted my right ankle, uh, four ribs. One rib went into my liver, my spleen, and my back in two places. And, uh, whoa, whoa. Gosh. I, uh, so like, you know, I'm, I'm finally, I guess I come around. I can't remember what the days were, but I had, I, they finished the book. They be in Putnam Penguin. They just finished the book. Damn. I only got up to the Yellow Canary. I think, I'm not even sure if I got up to WrestleMania because they just took notes and then they put me on a book tour. <laughs> right. And I did, I know it, I did 107 pieces of media um, and 30 towns in 25 days Whoa. from a touring bus. And they said I was gray. And they just propped me up. You only have four broken ribs. You, you, worked with, you wrestled the junkyard dog one night. Come on, right? <laughs> yeah. Holy cow, the junkyard dog. Yeah, well, who's going who gonna to beat that junkyard dog? Who's going to? Yeah. Hey, uh, where were you um, the, in New Orleans in the WrestleMania, right? Yeah. It's super, in the Super... Uh, super Dome. Yeah, remember we talked about it? You said, that's one place I haven't been? That's right. You're, you made it. All I right. made it. I still hadn't made the garden since, Vince. Yeah, so... <laughs> Anyway, I know you can hear me out there. My name's Lynn Denton the Grappler, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's where Watts used to run. Yeah, there. there. So for you folks, uh, uh, <laughs> the Grappler used to work for a guy named Bill Watts, who was a promoter in Oklahoma, and was one of the first guys to run the Superdome. Yeah. And the reason I stayed away from there, Lenny, was I heard this guy named Bill Watts, he, he had a big show there, and a yeah. lot of folks, yeah. and Junkyard Dog and yourself, Mm -hmm. And when it came time to get paid, he had envelopes, and he gave the main event their envelopes, and he gave the undercard guys their envelopes, and when the uh, undercard guys opened them, there was a letter just saying, you should be just proud that you were on the show. He didn't pay him. Actually, when I first okay, went to the first Superdome I worked, I was on the undercard, and I got that envelope. Thank You're you. kidding me. You should be lucky to be on this card with uh, stars like this on the card, and... Thanks you got you. Got I one. got one. Yeah. And so I, this is the first time I've but, heard. This but story. I had to. But so I worked my way up to the. Like I came back later, two years later. Yeah. And then, then I was a grappler. I was Lynn Denton. You know, when I was starting out as a gotcha. young guy, I made the Superdome. But I thought, all right, I'm gonna get a big payoff, and I get this envelope. You should be lucky to be on the card again. <laughs> this was the first time, oh, right? Oh, gotcha. Okay, so when I come back and. Two years later, I was more polished. Sure. I was a grappler. Had and I was in in the in the main events. And then I got a payoff that yeah. time. But, I mean, can you imagine a guy I, giving like, you should be lucky to be on the card? And <laughs> what are you going to eat? Exactly. Excuse me, uh, my landlord, uh, you should be lucky that I live we here. We were making $25 a night and sleeping in the cars. Back See, 3,000 oh. miles a week. Thank God you didn't come there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like you're in Wait the car all this time and you got to sleep in it too. <laughs> Holy cow. I, yeah. So you actually got one of those letters. Oh, yeah. I was there. Well, I got one of those, yeah. You know, they got an old saying, you got room in your navel for two peas in the heart of a promoter. <laughs> and I think Bill Watts, uh, <laughs> yeah. holy cow, that's pretty stiff. And not a damn thing we could do about it. Wasn't anything you could do about it back then. Nah. I wish nah. I'd have known back then, like, um, I, you're probably the guy that started the whole thing where people actually started getting agents and, and, and getting the promoters to pay Hey, listen, you get paid for this when I go do these things and this and that. This is what you know, I do for a living, not just for free. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> they, they so should. thank God for you. I mean, ah, I never did get to that point to have an agent, but yeah, you started the whole thing. Now look where it's at. It's much better for guys oh, that make guys it, you know. a lot better. Yeah, a lot better. You yeah. know, you go to like uh, that Superdome, and I know it's, it's old news now, but uh, um, I mean, they got, Lenny, they got catering. Yeah. They got breakfast, dinner. Really nice, lunch. yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, you can't get any for more first class. Yeah. I can remember there was a time in my career where I, I had a limousine and a Learjet and a red <laughs> carpet going to it and a suite and a dressing room catered, and I, I swear to you. And I'm in the suite, and there's everything a guy could ever want. And I was thinking to myself, I couldn't think. Of another thing to ask for, <laughs> yeah. and I remember going, mm, "That's not good." That's not We're good. downhill from here, That's baby. Right. And you well, know? you remember the time we, we went to England? You were shooting a thing in England. What was uh, that was like that. Um, they were doing the reality show with all the shoot the stars. Oh, oh. Remember we did that? It was like uh, three or four weeks we were there. I forgot about that. Well, you told me on the way over, right? You go. 
and we first got to, no, the first day, actually. We walk into the, your dressing room, and they got, they got this sign, Roddy Piper's dressing room on the door. I guess pretty cool. Look at that, brother. So I opened the door, and we got fruit, and we got catered food and stuff. And you go, and you set your bag down. And you said, Lenny, you see that sign on the door out there? Yeah. You see this food and these flowers yeah. and all this pretty stuff? Yeah. When we do the last shoot, <laughs> we'll come back, and that sign will be gone. There won't be one flower in this room or no food. I said, oh, come on. Yeah, I thought you were ribbing, right? Oh. I am not kidding. <laughs> We walk, we're walking down the hall, and I look up, and the sign's gone. Like the last, I Baby Jesus. You were dead on, buddy. Holy You've God. been there before. We, it was ITV1. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we were doing, we were hosting, oh, um, do you remember the name of it? I can't remember the name of the show, but I'm telling you, they were working you to death. Yeah, like, they were. It was like, can you shoot this one? Can you do this over? Do this over? Do this guy? Do this woman? Do this one? Yeah, and it was. Can lying. you commentate this? Can you go back? It was, it was, like, it was oh, something God. to do with celebrity. Celebrity. Um, uh, celebrity. But they had like uh, the guy that dated uh, Princess uh, Diana. Princess Di. Di. The, That's right. Him and the, the and tennis some player, rugby player, some tennis player, lady that won the Wimbledon tennis yes. and that stuff, and doggone it, what was it? Celebrity. Um, Can't say that, but they that, they were fighting, beating the hell out of each other. They came up with these games. <laughs> they came up with these crazy, crazy games, games. like they had t like like poles with big humps on the end of them, and they just like beat each other, like Fred Flintstone <laughs> they're, they're, and Barney. They didn't know what they're doing. They're they just a clue. killing each other. They didn't know what they're doing. And I, there's Lenny go. You know what? You, you should hit him harder. <laughs> hit him harder. He's having a great time, right? <laughs> <laughs> they had the guy, the shoot fighter, Ian Thomas, was the referee. Remember? Ian Thomas. Ian Thomas, I believe it was his name. Yeah. Was from England. Pretty decent guy. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I forgot. I even forgot. <laughs> yeah. Celebrity, Celebrity Classic Challenge? Movie. Yeah, I think so. Celebrity Challenge? Celebrity movie? Challenge, yeah. And so. uh, holy cow. <laughs> that was brutal. And I kept drinking tea with honey. Yeah. Because yeah. my throat was going. And finally, you were, you were helping me out as a brother. And finally, you said, listen. <laughs> Is your throat hurt, or do you just like the drink? <laughs> yes, if you just like the drink, get your ass up and go get it. <laughs> if you're sick, I'll help. You. The one I love the best over there is we would go to the to go. We went a few times to the when it was time for uh, to eat lunch, right? Yeah. And the break, and we go to the um, cafeteria, and of course you're trying to eat, and and I'm trying to eat, but they keep stopping you, and you make the celebrities are getting you to sign autographs. I said, let Roddy eat, will you please? <laughs> You know, he's got it. So after a few days of that, we go, look, can we just get some food brought to the dressing room? Yeah. You know, so we don't have to put up signing the autographs. He wants to eat and rest. You know, you guys are pushing and working the hell out of him out here. They oh, say, okay, man. okay, we can handle that. So they send the kid in, and I'm sitting there, and he's got his pad, and he goes, well, what would you like, sir? And we have chicken, and, and we have this bullshit or that or whatever. And I said, I'll take chicken. And he said, something. And he goes, well, for dessert, what would you like? He goes, what do you have? He goes, well, we got... Um, um, what do they call that? Um, uh, uh, said, um, figgy pudding, something dick. Something, oh, we're uh, back to the dicks. I uh, said, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's called um, <laughs> sort of cut off dick. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no it's, uh, it's I, a name they use in England for pudding, they have, right? yeah, it's dickless soft. pudding, <laughs> dick full pudding. I don't know what, I thought the guy was ribbon. It was. I, think, a, I said, "Hey, I thought he was, was being joking, trying to be yeah, a smartass." Yeah. And I said, "Hey, asshole, what are you talking about?" And you go, "Wait, calm down, Lenny. Lenny it's actually a dessert they have here." Lenny is watching my back. He's ready to kill this guy. I was it's something, Dick. It's, it, you know, Dicks have played a large part in my life the last year or so. <laughs> if, if, if I don't, spotted if I don't have dick, a, spotted Dick, mate. Spotted, spotted dick. dick. That's what it's called. Spotted I knew I had a brain cell left. <laughs> Too many pile drivers. Yeah, so, so what do you have for dessert? Well, uh, oh, we've got spotted dick. I said, what'd you say? <laughs> he goes, what? I said, what'd you say? Spotted, spotted dick. dick. You trying to be a smart ass boy? <laughs> he goes, no, sir. And Roddy goes, Lenny, is that your dessert? Calm down. Don't kill the guy. I go, okay. I've never heard of such shit. Spotted dick. No kidding. Yeah, that was it. You know, a man doesn't realize how much... A dick plays part in his life <laughs> until you don't have the damn thing. <laughs> well, listen, we, I got just nothing but great stuff. I got to take a break here in this, and, uh, and we'll be back in just a second uh, with some spotted dick.
And, <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Uh, just like wonderful stuff. We're here with the grappler, Lenny Denton. Uh, and this is Piper's Pod. We'll see you in two seconds. Bye bye. Yeah, we're back. Uh, 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 talking about spotted dick. <laughs> my, t- <laughs> <laughs> my career is, uh, <laughs> you know, what just played is, uh, holy cow, uh, Legend House. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about yeah, that, Rod. Well, I heard it's really good. I, yeah. Um, you know, I watched it for the first time. Uh, before, you know, uh, before we get to that, because <laughs> I don't want to have to. Cut my dick off and jump off the second story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to put. Have you seen the theme of this show today? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. But like, let me. I just want to like. I have known the grappler, and played ribs on him since he's been seventy. <laughs> no Some of the greatest things we've been in. Like you know, we were just before the break, uh, uh, gone to England together. I flew over to England to audition for this thing. And flew back. I flew to England for 20 minutes. Oh get on God. the plane and fly back. I remember that, yeah. Oh, baby oh, Jesus. Yeah. But, you know, like, then we lose, you know, it's like we lose touch with each other. I, I went, uh, just last time I think I saw Lenny, uh, the grappler, was maybe uh, oof, a, little, a little more than a year ago. And then we get apart, yeah. And we like we don't know what each other's doing. Yeah. And then like when we see each other, it's like we've never been apart. I don't know if <laughs> you've true. ever had a friend like that. It's very cool. <laughs> so like, uh, <laughs> what the shenanigans are you? Okay, let me just start this. Okay, okay, because I want to know what you're up to. But let me just tell a quick story <laughs> that'll get you in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is pretty priceless now. So. <laughs> You know, Lenny uh, Grappler has been living in Portland, Oregon for uh, how long now? Since I moved here in 87, so whatever that is. Baby, right? Jesus. Don't ask me that. <laughs> 87. I mean, you know, he's known all over the world. And he's made it his home, and beautiful wife, Katie, and his beautiful girls, you know. And, and <laughs> Portland, Oregon was like a, a very a very tight territory at one time. But, but uh, Don Owens... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don Owens, like, he was a little tiny guy, but he was just the scruffer, you know? I'll punch you right in the nose. Oh, and like, yeah. um, a couple of things. Just, I'll get to you. A couple of things. So it's my first day. Buddy Rose has been asking me, you know, come on down. I was working in L.A. Or come on up. You can, I've been working in L.A. about three years. And I was on top for the first time. What, that's a hard thing to do. The people may not understand when it was back in the territories when you left a territory you were nothing right and when you went in another territory you were nothing you had to build yourself you had up. to build yourself <laughs> up <laughs> so like leaving even the first time as male male <laughs> dicks uh <laughs> major trauma yes sir okay as <laughs> is cutting off your dick i just can't get around that one anyway it's hard to forget so <laughs> Those, they, they, back in these days, this is still the 70s, and I was playing the bagpipes in the ring, you know, and I was a villain, a evil guy, and so it's my, it's live TV, right? So, uh, Don Owens, you know, like, yeah, hi, how are y'all doing, you know? And he says, uh, and in this corner, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and he, he's going to play his bagpipes. So, like, back in the day, I get those bagpipes up, and I took off of Jack Benny with the violin. He'd play it horrible, but like Jack <laughs> yeah. B- Benny, Jack Benny could play with symphonies. He was sure. like, you know, and so those bagpipes, I'd make them put the the microphone down by the chanter, was where the the major noise comes out, and I like me. I'd, I'd hold them for thirty seconds. Like, and just from pain of eardrums. <laughs> You know, and finally, so there I get, and finally the whole building going, boo, boo, and Don Owens, Don Owens goes, all right, stop, stop. <laughs> and I stop, and he looks at everybody, stop, stop. He says, now, hang on. I can't play the bagpipes. You can't play the bagpipes. Let's give him another shot. <laughs> So no, like, it's okay. Just take the bagpipes. I think you missed it, Don. 
<laughs> First day in the territory. Oh, baby Jesus. All right, so then another quick one. Uh, Don Owens, like every Thanksgiving, uh, he would bring the boys uh, turkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I love this one too. And uh, so this one Thanksgiving, uh, one of my favorite midgets, uh, Tokyo Joe. Yes. Uh, Tokyo. Oh, yeah. yeah, there he is, great guy. But he had the, Don Owens had the midgets in. So he, it was Thanksgiving, and so he brings turkeys, and he gives turkeys to all the boys, and to the midgets, he gives them Cornish hands. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Don on a story. Go, okay, go. I, so Don Owens, um, I'm wrestling here. I've been here about two years. Yeah. And uh, so I, I wrestle. I do a thing where I wrestle Fujinami, was a Ooh. world champion in Japan. Wrestled so a lot. he came and wrestled me for the Northwest Heavyweight title and beat me here for the belt. Gotcha. So I flew to Japan and beat him for the belt back, and, come, gotcha. and I came back. Yeah. And so, but before this happened, we had done a show that is sold out. And so Don goes, uh, when he pays me, this is before I went to Japan, right? Gotcha. Don pays me, pays me my normal amount of money. Yeah. I go, Don, uh, excuse me, um, <laughs> you're missing a few hundred there. <laughs> uh, we sold out Eugene and we sold out Portland. Can you kick me a little cash here, buddy? He goes, that's all you're getting, you're on a guarantee. I go, yeah, but we sold out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's what you get extra usually. You know? He said, take that and get your ass out of here, boy. You will keep your job. I go, oh, okay. So I went, when I went to Japan, I couldn't figure no way to get no money out of this old guy. Yeah. And so I go, you know, he pays my phone bill because I, you know, I hire and fire a guy. Like I was helping uh, get the talent. So I called Katie Collect three times a day from Tokyo. <laughs> So when he got his bill, <laughs> that old bastard went oh. crazy. So he oh. calls me up and says, hey, meet me downtown in Portland. And he lives in Eugene. That's right. He calls me downtown. Me and Barry want to buy you something to eat. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I come down there, and as I round the corner, I open the door, and there's just uh, Barry and Don and you. And I went, I'm fired. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why is Piper here? <laughs> so I walked in. I sat down and Don goes, you know, you're fired, asshole. He's holding the phone bill. I go, let me guess who the new booker is. <laughs> so you start laughing, right? So here's a classic, and I love you to death for this, brother. If they can't see me, but I'm shaking your hand right now. I love you, too. Okay. You go like this because you're doing the love boat and you got movies going That's and you right. got you're wrestling for WWE and he wants you to run his TV. Yeah. And he goes, well, you got fired, you asshole, every day. And this is your this is the new guy I'm hiring, Roddy Piper. He's better than you anyway. He drew more money, he always has, and so you can see what you get. And I go, thanks, Don. Yeah, I had a good time working with you too. And so and so you went like this. You go, Don. I, I tell know. you what, I got all these irons in the fire, and I really want to help get you. And I can get this thing going. I, you got some great talent, but I'm underneath an assistant, and I think uh, I'd like to have Lenny, the grappler. <laughs> yeah, and you hired me on the spot for the same amount of money. I went, thanks, Don. Don said, shut up, I'll bet you. <laughs> so me and you, remember we worked, yeah, we worked yeah. together on it. That's how we got together on the TV. Holy it was God. great. I went home and said, yeah, you can believe this. I just got fired and hired again in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days, my I know, friend. I love it, man. What, so, like, I'm, I'm out of the loop. What are you doing now? Like, uh, oh, the, I'm re I'm actually working for West Coast Wrestling Connection. West Coast Wrestling, Wrestling Connection. Connection, and they they're on they're going to be on PDX. Um, I found out today that their first air date is is uh, May 24th. Is it on PDX? PDX. That's you know what? That's a great station. Yeah, and so uh, and I'm and so I'm working for them. And um, and what's the date that they're going to start? Uh, the first air date is air date. that when they show it on the air is is uh, May twenty fourth twenty fourth. Good for you. Yeah. Brother. What do you got but going? Come on, uh, May uh, the third coming up here. We got a show. Uh, we tape at the Bob White Theater. It's on sixty fourth and Foster, around the southeast side. Cool. Right in Felony Flats, right where all the wrestling fans live. God bless you. Come <laughs> on down. So we'll be there May third. It starts at one o'clock, and then the next day we're in Salem. And they're shooting some TV Great. there, too. Uh, you can just Google West Coast Wrestling Connection if any of you fans. Yeah. And you see it'll show you where to go, where to get your tickets and so, like, all that. So where, where do you do, like, where do you tape the shows? We tape the show at the Bob White Theater. Oh, God. Sorry, yeah. you just said that, didn't you? On 64th and Foster. We'll be doing four shows on the 3rd. Four and shows on the 3rd. We tape third. four shows in advance. And nice. So, nice. And so it's, uh, it's old theater. It's kind of like the... Uh, could remind you of the Don Owens days. It was a seated theater like you go in a walk-in movie. 
Oh, that's and so, cool. and so and it's got a stage, and we put the ring in front of the stage, and we got the lights and all this stuff. Do you have people all around it, or just it's on the just on the one side? You got the Beautiful. hard camera shooting. You know, Beautiful, man. Stage, Good. Yeah. And what's that? What league is it? It's w- West Coast Wrestling Connection. West Coast Wrestling Connection. Yeah. Good deal. You got what we got going on? You got oh, a young talent. I tell you, yeah. There's a lot of reason. A lot of guys. All the guys on the you know West Coast. Uh, there's guys in L- uh, California that do. Uh, uh, wrestling from Hollywood, uh, yeah, you know, pro wrestling yeah, from Hollywood. Yeah, uh, David Marquette. Yeah, and Mar- some of his guys. And uh, there's one guy in particular. It's called Othello. Now, what's his name? Othello. Is Othello. It, Othello. Now, you better that's be what tough. I said. That's what I said. What does that mean, yo? And so, Joe V. You know Joe V. Right? The, I love <laughs> Joe V. Joe V. Goes well, Lenny. Since you read so much Shakespeare in your life, <laughs> there was a guy. If you ever read Shakespeare, you'd know he was a big black. A, a king warrior, you know, and he was like, nobody could beat him, and that's why he calls himself that. I go, so you read Shakespeare, and that big, tall black guy read Shakespeare? I don't, I don't think so. Somebody kidding. gave him that name, because I know he don't read Shakespeare. But the guy is seven foot uh, tall, okay, legit. He's seven. Seven foot tall, and he's in shape, and he can nip up like the little guys. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah he's agile. I couldn't believe it. Seven feet tall? Seven How feet much tall. He, he weighs about 290 right now. How old, he's cut up. How he's got abs. He? How he's, old is he? I would say he's 30, 32 maybe. Really? Yeah, he's he, he's a, he can nip up? He can nip up. I couldn't believe him when I seen him do it. I mean, just Holy zip cow. right up. And I, can't, I can't even. So I he's one it. of the guys that's going to be at these tables? He's going to be there. There's going to be, uh, let's see, how much Gangrel's so going to be there. Who? He worked, Gangrel, a guy who worked nice. for Vince. Nice, nice. Uh, for WWE. What, what about like uh, Thunder and... And um, just saying for the poor, the great guys, uh, uh, Thunder and Wade Hess. And Exile. Exile. And the, uh, the Blanchards. Blanchards. Yeah, Jeremy uh, Blanchard. Large. Sir. Patrick Large. Yep. Jeremy Blanchard's uh, working on the card. Actually, I, I manage him as in part of the wrecking crew. Nah. Yeah, he's a legacy there, champion. You got to care. You don't, <laughs> you don't have a hair in your butt if you don't catch these guys. They are <laughs> fantastic. Patrick Large. Patrick Large. Who, who you, else? You know what? They, the thing is, like the tapings, the first set, like the lights. We, we, we had some few issues with lighting and different sure. things. But you know what makes the show rod and like you always know? Those guys go after them young guys and just beat the hell out of each other. <laughs> It's like, how can you not like that? Yeah. I don't care about your lights. Let me see true. this thing. You know what I mean? Put a flashlight <laughs> on. We're killing it. each other, man. You, <laughs> you know, man. That's they one thing it. about the Northwest. The guys, uh, you know, they don't have a chance to get all over the world, but they put in so much heart. Every mm, one of them. Sure I do. love them all. I respect every one of them. Every one of them. Uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, Pat, there was that kid in the, like the Hugh Hefner thing, uh, it was that kid, uh, Eric oh, uh, Wright? Eric Wright. Eric Wright. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's there. He's there. Uh, the other guy, Ashton Fatan, the fellow from Chicago. Ashton, the get out. He'll be there. He'll uh, be there. Matt Stryker from WWE. He's going to be there. Matt's a great. He's guy. a great guy. That Ashton Vuitton. Yeah. He's a. You know that kid's going to be a doc. He's studying to be a doctor. Yeah. He's, yeah, he, he told me that. Yeah. Go, check <laughs> on way, yourself and wonder why you're past me. I go, here's what she's already know, Grandpa. I go, I figured you did. <laughs> <laughs> but you that know what is... I found out from managing? You know, I wasn't a manager. I was a wrestler like you, yeah. right? Yeah. And so don't ever be a manager, Rod, because here's yeah. what I figured out. What? By the time they get to me, you've already got them real pissed off. So they're, hit, they're, <laughs> they're throwing them harder than they were at the start. So ah. you get the brunt of the thing. Yeah, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, I didn't do it. They're, he, he did they're it. killing you, right? <laughs> yeah. They're killing you. Yeah. Holy cow. And yeah, there's a lot of young stars and, and a lot of people. And it's going to be a packed card. Oh, you know who's. You're not going to believe who's going to be there. Who? Alani Kai. Get out. <laughs> Remember Alani Kai? They want to start a thing cow. where she comes in as a legend and, and they're, and they're going to eventually probably try to get a women's division. But she's going to come in as a legend and do some promos. She's and, great. Yeah. And I she's said, well, great. I said, get her here, man. You bet. I love you. Lilani, you know? She's the per- she herself is worth the price of admission. Yes. And it's a, not the Bob Hope, Bob White? Bob White Theater, yeah. Bob White Theater, and you got some, you got Othello. Yeah, Othello. <laughs> Seven feet tall that yeah. can nip up. Yes, sir. Buddy. And you got, did you say he's got abs? Oh, he's cut up. He's ripped up. I hate him already. I do too. <laughs> so who are you going to, like, who are you going to? Who are you going to match him with? Well, he's he's did this thing already where I brought him out and he hurt this big guy. 
He's not as big as Othello, but he's, he hurt his ribs. So Big Duke, the guy's called Big Duke. Big he's Duke. a heck of a hand, too. Be a good name but for a dog. I don't think, it, you know, the last match he had, it was a handicap. He beat two guys. He stacked them on top of each other. Okay, so Big Duke is wanting him, but I'm not really sure if Duke knows what he's stepping into. Gotcha. And so, you know, May 3rd, gotcha. we got some plans for Mr. Yeah. Duke. <laughs> it reminds me, like, when Andre the Giant yeah. was young. You know? I kind of compared him to Andre, but I mean, Andre still Andre's was Andre. a freak of nature. Yeah, this a, guy, no one compares to Andre. I, no, oh my no God. one. And that's with all due respect to yeah. Othello or any other person, yeah. uh, Big Show. Uh, Andre was Andre the Giant. He's a real deal. Oh, you man. know, when he was young, he'd come to every territory that I ever was, and he'd always pick me to wrestle. Of course, <laughs> yeah. You know, cause, yeah, I, you know, it's Andre. But the he was first, good. He, he was, was great. Psychology. He was great. Yeah, he was great. The first thing he would do every match, he would come after me. He would take my, rip my T-shirt off me, <laughs> yes, and then sir. he would put it on himself. That's it looked like Baby Huey. Now, what, <laughs> he's great. You know, I'll tell you what, what happened one time. This is how smart the guy is. That you wouldn't think this, you know. <laughs> you think he'd just beat the hell out of people and be so big. Yeah. We had a six-man tag. M Dick Murdoch, me, and Bob Orton Jr., you know, uh, Ace, yeah, Ace, right? Him. We're in a th uh, six man against um, Junkyard Dog, Andre the Giant, and Paul Orndorff. Holy and, cow. And it's a spot show and it's packed, right? It's like, like always, hanging from the rafters, <laughs> baby. <laughs> you know, it's, it's every story I ever told. Every it's, story. It's, it's, Any old time he tells the a story, it's so well. hanging from the rafters, baby. <laughs> like, so we're uh, in there, and so we do the thing, we're flying all over for him, and bam, 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 it's time to get. You know, get, get ours back, right? So I get Orndorff in there, and I hit Orndorff, and he hits me back. I scratch his eyes, he scratches my eyes back. I kick him in the nuts, he kicks me back in the nuts. I go, well, you mind tagging Junkyard Dog in? So Doug, Dog comes, heads butt me five times in a row. I go, gee! So I give him a nut shot, he gives me a nut shot. I go, I'm looking at Murdoch and Orton, I'm going, I can't, who's supposed to? Finally, finally, Andre goes, tag me in, boss. And everybody stops, and Dog tags Andre in. He says, grappler, push me in the corner. Referee, get him. Load the boot, grappler, and kick me. I load the boot. I kick him in the stomach. He goes, oh, and he drops to his knees. And we got the heat on Andre. Can yeah, you believe that? Uh, he that's... said, you're prima donna assholes. That's Andre. That's Andre, okay? That's a great Tell me know, that's not a classic guy. That, yeah. One <laughs> time, same thing. I was young, and it was kind of a spot show, and I was working with Andre. Yeah. And you know what? He wouldn't pin me. He kept making me work his arm. Yeah. Like 35 minutes. Wow. And he was just like, but he was, and then so many other, he, once he found somebody that he was comfortable working yes. with, he kept picking, in each yeah. territory, he kept picking them over and over. What he did was this. Like, I know, again, you know, I, I don't know how many times I wrestled Andre or you, yeah. maybe 50, you guess it. You know? Yeah. Um, so now we're in Madison Square Garden and just keep it as clean as I can here. Andre the Giant, for me, insists on getting hurt in the ring Fantastic. and getting carried out on a stretcher. Oh, man. For me. Fantastic. I was tagged up with David Did that Stokes. make you a what? It Unbelievable. Made, it made me. Yeah. And then he come back like with... God, he, I seen that. I seen that on tape. It was he come back with the Spirit God, of seventy six. Spirit of seventy six. Yeah. yeah. And you, you know why that happened? Was like uh, Vince was going. You know what this that? No, boss. You <laughs> yeah. Have Piper. Yes, yeah, sir. And he insisted. Yeah. And that he's such a classy guy. That was his way of repaying me for all those for times. all those times. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like it's like Rod. He 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 would. He would like if he liked you, and like he did you and loved you. He'd insist on working with you. Yeah. The only bad thing about with me, he insisted on drinking with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he insisted that I drink too. <laughs> How you tell him no, right? Yeah, uh, we just stop and get a case of wine on the way to the show. <laughs> I go, boss, uh, will you go ahead and drink stiff. on the way there? And on the way back, he'd drink the beer, right? Oh. And one time I snuck out on him and he found me. Oh, baby Jesus. Oh, brother, that oh, wasn't sweet. That I... wasn't, you know, he found me. I was. I went to Black Bart's across the river in Baton Rouge at his trailer park. Okay, nice. living in a trailer park. 
hiding from Andre. I figured he'll never find me here. Somebody stooged me off. I think it was Black Bart because he got scared. Uh, Black Bart. I'm asleep because I was hung over from the last three nights. <laughs> and, I, and I was asleep in my underwear. And all of a sudden, the mattress turns upside down with me in it. I bounce off the wall, I get up, and he chops me back across the bed. The giant? The giant. And he goes, I said, let me get my pants, boss. Hold on. <laughs> we went to the After Hours Club, and I mean, from there on, it's history. I mean, I, was, I love it. God. I love never it run from me and lie to me again, <laughs> Kepler. I go, yes, sir. <laughs> I will be right back after this break. Oh, it's, it's a true great story, stuff, dude. Man. Well. Andre the Giant story. <laughs> uh, we just uh, in the break. Uh, the grappler was telling me we finishing that story about he. What was it? he couldn't get in the trailer? Just no. He, arm? he got in. He got in the trailer, but it's like going through the bedroom. You know, the trailers are small, and Andre's so big. Like in a trailer park. Trailer. It's a regular trailer park. Like <laughs> how trailer. Can you, can you yeah. just say picture at night <laughs> in the trailer park and yeah. a giant is walking through? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Here he comes, looking for you. Yeah, no. <laughs> villagers. <laughs> Teeth, villagers in his teeth. It's yeah, like a nightmare, man. Oh. And he wakes me up dead asleep, oh. flips the bed upside down. The mattress with me in it. Oh, oh man, it's something else. You know, oh, <laughs> man. Ah, holy cow. <laughs> I was going to tell him Andre the Giant story, but I think I'll just edit that one. <laughs> um, holy cow. There's so much. Ah, I got, I've been laughing hard. Oh, <laughs> it's really nice to see you again. Oh, great to see you. Right. You Thank know, you very much, I love much, you buddy. so much, man. Thank you very you know, much. We have run across so many people, and both were raised in such an, uh, an odd occupation. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And both, neither one of us, uh, big guys, uh, so we had to fight to get there. You know, you look like you used to always tell me, so I'll, I'll work 24-7 to keep from getting a real job. No kidding. I, mean, <laughs> I want to be a pro wrestler by now. You God. betcha. But you know what? The thing was is um, they have a wrestling school, this uh, West Coast Wrestling Connection as they well. Do? In Where? Salem. In Salem. They have a wrestling school? Yeah, and I go Who's there once every two weeks. You train them? Yes, sir. Listen, if you yes, want to go to a wrestling school, uh, any place the grappler's at, that's the school to go to. And I, I put my stamp on that. Thank you very that. much, Roddy. I appreciate that. And I and I go there, you know, once every two weeks, and and there's probably about eight to, to ten students total right now. And um, I go in there, and, and the last I, the last Wednesday I did it, and yeah. um, <clears throat> these kids are they're in there, but they don't um, like like we had to learn from the ground up. You yes, know? yes. They want to jump straight into a match, you know. And it's like, hey, uh, no. I say, I told all of them. I said, listen. I, they put they put my name on this stamped my name on this wrestling school academy because they want to use my name, gotcha. which is fine. Yeah, but it's changing now. None of you guys are having a match until I say you're ready. Because if you go out there telling people that the grappler trained you, yeah, if yeah. you're the shits, I look like the shits. That's right. I brother. said that's not going to happen. I have been 32 years in this business, that's killing right, myself man. trying to make a living, yes, and you're sir. not going to screw it up. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So, they're going to learn, you know, Good, and, and you the know, ones that can't make it, can't make it. You know, you know? that's what's great. You know, you're going to get an honest, an honest professional in there. Some of these schools, the old, the way that used to happen, I know, you know, uh, yeah. Lenny, what they used to do with, they had wrestling schools, but like, it was just a scam. Because <laughs> yeah. they, I'll make up the number. I don't know. Like, give us a thousand dollars. You know, uh, if you can make it through training, we'll get you booked. On you on the TV, you know whatever the yeah. pitch was, yeah. And you'd come, and they'd have some hookers there. <laughs> no, that was later. They, they, <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that school. Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> like they have some pretty capable guys of beating you up, uh, stretching you. We called it. Um, yeah. And you'd come, and they'd beat you up so bad you wouldn't come. back. You wouldn't come back. That's and just to get your money. money. Yeah, and they would. And they I, did it week after week. Holy cow! I mean, in, I don't know. It was a story in Florida where they beat one guy up so bad, where he came out of the uh, the school onto the street, and people and fell down, and people thought he got hit by a car. Yeah, they put the sugar roll on him. He yeah. had blood coming oh, out of his yeah. nose and eyes and ears, and they're brutal. They're like these. You know, Magnum TA. I heard yeah. that Magnum TA financed his house and gave the money to Buzz Sawyer. Poor Buzz is dead no. now, I'm not going to to get trained. 
No. Of course, he made his money back. He was a star. Thank yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Finance his mom's home to get trained. Don't do that. Don't do that. Tips do that. what not to do <laughs> in wrestling. And I'll tell you a good one about Ace, you know, uh, Bob Bobby Orton Jr. Orton. I was in, uh, <laughs> check this out. I'm in Louisiana, okay? Yeah. And this ain't no bragging on me, but I, you, when you hear the end of the story, you know what? <laughs> Bob Orton Jr. Is, comes out, we're at TV. This guy had came, uh, say, a year before and talked to Grizzly Smith who was Jake Robertson's dad? Yeah, and he was one of the. He was like the office guy who worked for Bill Watts, right? Uh, this basic stooge. Gotcha. Anyway, <laughs> no, I love Grizz. I always got along with Grizz. Gotcha. He could have stooged me off a lot more than he did. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> he let a lot of it go, but he goes. Um, the guy comes to him, the fan, and goes, "I want to be a wrestler. I want, you know, I want to get in the ring and try. I think I can do it." And he says, "You're too overweight." He says, "You're too overweight. You need to lose at least a hundred pounds." What do you weigh? The guy said 300 pounds. He goes, you need, go lose 100 pounds and come back, and maybe we'll talk. A year later, the guy comes back, and he lost 100 pounds. Holy so Grizz goes to Bill and says, the guy, you know, he tells him the story. He goes, well, after TV, let's put him in the ring and see what he can do. Yeah. We're going to stretch him, you know? Yeah. So they get, um, it was uh, Sandy Barr, uh, Jesse Barr's boy. Yeah. Jesse Barr and Buddy Landell. They were supposed Buddy to be. Buddy Landell. Remember him? They were supposed yeah. to be pretty good amateurs. And so they got them in there with a the guy. And so me and Orton Jr., Orton Jr. is getting ready to go to the shower. I'm already finished. Now I got the Northwest Heavyweight Belt, the Mississippi Heavyweight Belt, and one of the tag team belts. But I ain't no shooter, so they don't ask me to do nothing. Just make sure you win your match every night and nobody kicks your ass when you're fired. So Orton Jr. has got his boots unlaced. He's just tied around his ankles. He's got his towel and his stuff. He's fixing to go downstairs to the shower. And he's watching me, sit, sitting beside me. And he goes, so Landell tries the guy, and the guy keeps getting away from him. Buddy Landell tries the tries guy? Tries to take him down straight, and the guy keeps setting out and getting away. Really? So it's okay, let Jesse give it a whirl. Golly, buddy, hell, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Watches all over his ass. Ooh. Jesse Barr gets on him, and he can't hold the guy down either. The guy keeps slipping out and getting away. <laughs> so Orton, Orton looks at me and goes, I'll be damned. You know how he is, right? He goes, yeah. I guess I'm going to have time with this. Oh, oh, oh. I said, oh, shit. Orton goes down with his laces tied around his ankles still. Yeah. And his towel and having his under tights. Slides in, holds his hands up like he's in school. And Bill, he says, yeah, you got a question? He goes, can I give it a try? He goes, yeah. Goes behind, takes him down, puts him in a sleeper, puts the guy out. Boom. <laughs> Guy comes to, he goes, you want to try it again? He goes, yeah. Takes him down, puts him to sleep again. He goes, okay, I guess you're not a wrestler. That's how quick, how good Orton was. Uh, I'm telling you, buddy. Uh, I had a good man watching <laughs> yeah, my back. Yes, sir, bud. Bobby Orton, holy <laughs> cow. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, Bobby Orton stories. Yeah. Uh, he, Ace, he's an exceptional, he's a man's man. You know what he did Didn't one he? time? And yeah. I was in San Antonio. Working for uh, Tully Blanchard and his dad, yeah. Southwest uh, Championship Wrestling. Had the tag belts and all this stuff. We're doing good. Tully goes out in Corpus Christi and there's a big Mexican fellow and he gets you know coming back from the ring and you know how we're taught to watch the guys' backs. Yeah. If you see one of the boys getting into it, go out there and help. Don't just leave him by himself. No kidding. Because the fans are triple four timing, whatever they'll kill him. Absolutely. And so this guy's like he's bigger than Tully. He's, he's trying to hit him and. The police or the security's not really doing much. I tell my partner, come on, let's go, Tony. Let's go out here and get help Tully back, you know? Yeah. So when we get out there, Tully, the guy takes a poke at Tully, and he ducks, and he pulls, and it's in the winter, he pulls a coat over the guy's head, and he went down. Yeah. Well, I just run back and just booted him right in the face. Gotcha. But I had that big-ass boot on, and it split the guy's lip all the way from his lip up to his eye. It knocked him out, knocked his front teeth out. Whoa. Out he went, and I went, oh, I didn't mean to kick him that damn hard. So he, he's laying there. Wrestlers. So, so I go back and take a shower, and I come back, got paid, and I look out there, and the medics, he's still laying in the floor. I went, holy shit, this, I'm going to kill this man. And I told him, Tony, let's get out of here. This might be the last night I get to run free, brother. I think I'm going to kill that fellow. So we haul, I mean, I was scared. And we hauled back to, ass to Houston, right? And um, so anyway, the guy come to in the ambulance, they tell me, and he sued Tully. Instead of me, because he didn't see me kicking. <laughs> yes. And it was a hundred and fifty thousand dollar lawsuit, which is back in what eighty something was a lot of money, right? A lot of money. And so Tully gets pissed off at me. He says, "Man, you got me." So I said, "I didn't. I was out there trying to help you, dude." He so he's arguing back and forth. And he's pissed off. So then he starts running me in every match every night, trying to get me hurt down by the border. 
and all that stuff. And, and the people are like waiting for me to come. They're going, come on, come on. And so I'm fighting fans every night. And I said, tell them, you do that one more time, I'm going to whoop your ass when I come back. I'm tired of this bullshit. And so he had. He had I can see you. Yeah. Uh, you're angry. So he had, <laughs> so I'm still mad still, about it. Yeah. I like Tully, but that was wrong. And so Orton is in the territory and he was the, you know, the gun in the territory. Yeah. yeah. He comes over in Beaumont. I tell, tell he sends him over. I said, he comes over and says, can I talk to you a minute, Lenny? Now, we're friends, right? Yeah. I go, what is it, Bobby? He goes, Tully sent me over here. Um, can you back off, Tully and Gino? He said, um, um, you know, he's, I work for him, and I, I know we're friends. I said, I'm giving my notice. Don't worry about it. So yeah. I went right over and gave my notice. But that's, you know, Bobby was like the shooter in the territory. Yeah, so he, he had to take care boy. of business for the guy. So yeah. he comes over, and we're being friends. He's just like, can you just, can't just back out? I don't want to mess you all up and hurt you. You know, I, I don't have to. I go, thanks, Bobby. Thank you very much. I'm giving my notice now. And I did left. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, Bobby, one time, uh, oh, there's so many. Uh, holy cow. Um, Bobby Orton and I are coming back from Poughkeepsie <laughs> doing three weeks of television in one day. Whoa. And, you know, we're drinking rather heavily in the car on the way home. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and we get the bright idea, we want sushi. So we're in, headed from Poughkeepsie back to New Jersey, and we make a bypass right downtown Manhattan. Okay. Whoa. So, we, this, you know, we get out of the car and... We go in and we took our time. We had a could have, sushi, more sushi. Yes, sake, more sake. <laughs> sake. Gisha, no gisha, more sake. <laughs> we had a great old time. And finally, baby Jesus, finally we go to leave and we go outside and there's the car double parked next to another car with the doors closed and locked. The car was running in the back of the window. You could see my Halliburton. It was surrounded <laughs> with police, and they had two guys handcuffed. <laughs> we just got out of the car and closed it, <laughs> and watched two around. guys try to steal it. Oh. And he would cough and boom, and we're going, no, no, we're fine. And can you have us one of them slip things we can get in the car? And away we go. <laughs> no, no, That's a true story, That's man. Great. He, That's he great. never missed a beat. <laughs> Baby That's Jesus. Steal your car. Holy cow, man. You know something, Roddy? Oh. You know, a lot of people don't know. I mean, I was, like you said, we go way back when yeah. I was 17 years old. Back then, you know, I was like um, one of the young guys, you know, on the underneath card, you know, the, the Pooms, one, plus one other match <laughs> on the card. Yeah. And so, but the one thing that everybody appreciated and respected about you stood up for us. Uh, you did. You were one of the top guys that did it. You'd go tell Oli, Oli, up, you Oli, okay? <laughs> this kid can yeah. do this and this guy can do that. And you would stand up for money and you would, you were the guy that would, we looked up to. And I, and, and I still do, and I always will. I, I just want you to know that. You know? I always have. It means a lot. Yes. I, 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 the HBO Real Sports about that <laughs> was a little stiff. <laughs> you know, well. but, uh, and you know the good thing about doing that show is they play it every week for a month. <laughs> you know? yes. Let's do it more time. Fire him again, Devin. He's already fired. We'll double fire him. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, if um, <coughs> yeah, but uh, the classic was working with Don Owens. We had a blast. Oh, here's what I love. Oh. You go, you he right, oh. <laughs> right, a lot of people know. So you're you're doing the love boat, right? Because you know, we had a phone. Right. We, you had a phone hooked up, so you call me direct. And uh, while I'm doing TV, okay, so just a second, we gotta set up these <laughs> okay, fans. Okay, okay. This is how crazy <laughs> this business is. Lenny is the is the head cheese in uh, Northwest. He's. Uh, taking care of all the business. I, <laughs> I am on the love boat on the East Coast. <laughs> Portland, you know, is on the West Coast. It's beautiful. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, and this beautiful <laughs> studio we have and lady taking care of That's us. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And so it was, it was the love boat reunion. It was a movie. So I'm on the love boat on the <laughs> East Coast, literally. And I, was, I got them to put the captain to put up a line. Yes. So now. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm on, so, I'm get, so I get a call 
And I'm in the middle of fix, getting ready to shoot the TV, and everybody got their stuff, and everybody's getting in the dress room, getting dressed, and I'm laying stuff out, and and uh, I get a call, and you go, hey, Lenny, uh, I talked to Don there, and uh, uh, Billy Jack missed a couple of shows, and uh, need to fire him tonight. I go, what? <laughs> I don't know if you folks ever seen Billy Jack Haynes, but he ain't a little feller. No. Okay, he, and he was in his great shape, and uh, he's got a, bit he's of a, got temper. a real bad temper. <laughs> Uh, but I'm on the East Coast yeah. in the water. <laughs> I said, you, you could have waited. To, well, no, it's your job, you know. I go, yeah, that's true. But and I was in pretty good shape, but I wasn't. I was like, I don't know about this one, you know. Whoa. I said, okay. Okay, oh. Roddy, I got it. I got it. I got it. So, so I went in there just like the man I am, and I went, listen, this ain't coming from me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> this ain't coming from me. Okay, I want you to know right now, Billy. It's that damn Roddy Piper and that Don. <laughs> if I had my way, I'd give you the heavyweight belt. But oh. instead of that, we're going to have to fire you tonight. <laughs> he goes, oh, he goes like, yeah, I figure he's going to go ballistic, right? He's yeah. Gonna go off. I'm going to have to fight him or he's going to kill me or something's yeah. going to happen. At least he's going to slap somebody. Somebody. And he just looked at me and was dumbfounded. Was free. I couldn't believe him. He goes, what? I told him again. I'm serious, man. You, you're gone. You missed the shows. Don's mad. And yeah. What am I going to do? Tell my boss no? <laughs> he goes, I should have expected that. Got his shit and left. Say. I went, well, that shocked me. I was like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so, while, let me tell you, while I'm on that boat, the, <laughs> yeah. literally the love boat, yeah. I'm not kidding you, yeah. on the East Coast going up and down shooting this movie. Now, you know, a man can drink a lot on a boat. <laughs> so it's nighttime. And, oh, geez, we only got four minutes left. Uh, it's, I got to get this story out. So it's nighttime. And, you know, they have different things going on in the, in the boat and the ship. And uh, I, I come in and I walk in and there's like a dance floor and there's a band and I don't know what I did to this day. I'm not sure what I did wrong, but I kind of walked in and I'm looking and all of a sudden, boom, somebody kicks me in the ass. Holy cow. I turn around. <laughs> yes. Seriously? Really? <laughs> and he was from uh, South Africa. Huh. Now, I don't know what I did. I don't know if I came and got in front of him or something. Yeah. But I didn't care. Yeah. I said, come here. Oh, yeah. And I got him to the side of the ship. Mm. This is nighttime. Whoa. And I said to him, you're going to apologize to me. And if I don't like it, I'm throwing you overboard. And they will not find you. <laughs> they will. Not well, this, I didn't understand it. Yeah. Now, while this was going on, I didn't know it, but the DP, uh, the uh, cameraman, the guy who runs the director of uh, production, uh, Guy runs a camera, right? right? Takes the pictures. He saw what happened, and he's watching. Oh, and saw the guy apologizes. And says, Ain't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I got him, and he really starts apologizing. I bet. Yeah. In my little mind, <laughs> I boom, you know, nye, nye, just come back and pick him up, yeah. right? Well, it would have taken. Uh, they told me. A mile to, to stop turn around, the yeah. And then where the hell is he? It's like find a needle. You probably never find him. Yeah, would have killed him. Yeah. So, but all right. So the next morning, it was his Aaron, Aaron <laughs> Spelling. Aaron Spelling. Oh yeah. Yeah, the Aaron Spelling. Really? Yeah. Oh, so goodness. the next morning. <laughs> oh no! Hold on. Could you pick a little bigger name or something? <laughs> uh, I gotta tell you, Bob Orton story before we go. Okay, uh, Aaron Spelling. He comes. I'm in the sauna. <laughs> Trying to get some of it out, you know. And I, yeah. Aaron Spelling comes in the sauna with his clothes on. Jeez. And just, uh, hello, Roddy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> really don't feel much like talking. Yeah. Um, so were you going to uh, throw somebody overboard last night? Oh, let me think for a second. Mm, last night. <laughs> that would be the night before last or the last night? Last night. That'd be that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was. And he said to me. Do you know that a mile to, and you, no, but uh, I tell you something, he kicked me in the ass. Yeah. And he said, what? He kicked me in the ass. And that photographer stuck out, stood up for me. Yeah. A and so I got out of that. But so like, yeah. so, <laughs> but uh, just a second. So go back with Bobby, Bobby Orton. I just saw him, right? Uh-huh. And you're, you're saying, Roddy, 
Right. You couldn't you pissed off somebody? <laughs> yeah. Aaron Spelling, yeah. right? With a bigger name. See, yeah. This is yeah. what Bobby Orton says to me <laughs> at the last, holy cow, last time I saw WrestleMania. They, uh, Vince McMahon, I think he was like 23 on the billionaire list, yeah. right? So Bobby Orton and I are talking, <laughs> and finally Bobby Orton says to me, uh, uh, Roddy, he says, uh, did you see the guy's number 23 on the billionaire list? He says, don't you think uh, maybe it's time to get along with him? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, Rod. Yeah. You know, like, you what do you think? Rethink it a little what bit. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Might help you along in life, just a little. You yeah, know. <laughs> I love you. Where, do, where are they going to have that? Uh... Oh, it's the Bob White Theater, uh, May 3rd at 1 o'clock. Bob White Theater, May 3rd. West Coast Wrestling Connection. You West Coast Wrestling Connection. I think uh, it comes out of uh, Hollywood with David Marquette and a lot of wonderful people, wonderfully talented wrestlers. You don't want to miss that. Um, <laughs> Geez, there's an Alton Owen story I'd love to tell, <laughs> uh, but uh, we don't have time. So, listen, you don't want to miss those folks. They're great, great young athletes. Uh, and thanks, Rod, thanks for having me on your show. It's I love an you, honor Obama. To find. It's an honor. Thank you very much. I, I love you all, and we'll talk about Legend House <laughs> another day. Ah, there's those bagpipes. I'll leave you with an Irish poem for those who love us. May God bless. For those who don't, may God turn their hearts. And if he can't turn their hearts, may he turn their ankles so we recognize him by the way. We're gone.